are now going to move on to routing the board. Routing is the process of laying tracks and vias on the board to connect the component pins. The PCB editor makes this job easy by providing sophisticated interactive routing tools. In this section of the training, we will manually route the entire board, single-sided, with all tracks on the top layer. The interactive routing tools help maximize routing efficiency and flexibility in an intuitive way, including cursor guidance for track placement, single-click routing of the connection, pushing obstacles, automatically following existing connections, all in accordance with applicable design rules. Before starting to route, it is important to configure the interactive routing options. These are found in the PCB Editor Interactive Routing page of the Preferences dialog. So let's go ahead and go into the System Preferences here under PCB Editor and then into the Interactive Routing page. We want to go ahead and set the Routing Conflict Resolution Current Mode to Stop at First Obstacle. And keeping in mind, we can always cycle through the Enabled Modes are enabled up here interactively as we route by pressing shift R to cycle through those commands. In the interactive routing options section of the page we want to make sure that the automatically remove loops option is enabled. This option allows you to change existing routing by simply routing an alternate path. You route a new path until it meets the old path and create a loop and when you right click to indicate it is complete the software then automatically removes the old redundant part of the routing. We also want to confirm that the interactive routing width and via sources are both set to rule preferred. And then with this done, we're going to go ahead and click OK to close the dialog. We are still using a one millimeter grid from component placement. Now that we're moving into routing, we definitely want a finer grid. So let's go ahead and set the snap grid to 0.25 millimeters in the home grid and units area for the snap grid and press enter to dedicate that. And as usual, we will see our visible grid on the board actually change. So it's now actually time to route. So interactive routing is launched by clicking on the route button. You only need to use the drop down menu if you plan to use one of the other routing options. Since the components are mostly surface mount, this board will be routed on the top layer. And as we place tracks on the top layer of the board, we will use the rat's nest or connection lines to guide us. Tracks on a PCB are made from a series of straight segments. Each time there is a change of direction, a new track segment begins. Also, by default, the PCB editor constrains tracks to a vertical, horizontal, or 45 degree orientation, allowing you to easily produce professional results. This behavior can be customized to suit your needs, but for this tutorial, we will just use the default. Once we reach the target pad while routing, we'll right click or escape to release that connection, and this will leave us in the interactive routing mode. Uh, while not placing a track, pressing escape or right click will exit you out of the actual routing mode. Now before we get started because we want to route this all on a single layer you can notice I've got a few crossovers here uh, with Q1 and Q2 that will make that difficult to route on one side of the board so I'm going to left click and hold to pick these parts up and press the space bar to rotate them just to get a better placement for being able to fully route this board on a single side. So before we start routing, we just want to check which layers are currently visible by looking at the layer tabs down below. If the bottom layer is not visible, we can open the View Configurations dialog again by clicking on the little color box here and enable the bottom layer. We're going to go ahead and click on the top layer down here at the bottom of the workspace and make sure that it is our current or active layer and it is ready to route on. It's often easier to route in single layer mode so we're going to go ahead and press Shift S. We can see that that toggles us into and out of single layer mode. And then on the Home tab, we're going to go to Routing and then Route. Or we can right click and choose Interactive Routing. Or we can simply press the R hotkey to start the routing mode. Whichever way we choose to do, I prefer shortcut keys. So I'm going to go ahead and press R. 
And this will now put us into routing mode, as we can see by the command crosshair. We're going to go ahead and position the cursor over the lower pad on connector Y1. And as we move closer, you can see that you get that octagonal snap that lets us know that we are on the electrical center of the pad. And then we can go ahead and left click or press enter to anchor the first point of the track. Move the cursor towards the bottom pad of the resistor R1 and click to place a segment and then move into the pad. And again, we see that electrical snap. Click, click to dedicate the tracks. And then we can right click out of there. And I'm going to right click one more time to escape the routing. I'll go ahead and zoom in here a little bit so we can take a bit of a closer look. And we're going to go ahead and again invoke the routing command. I'm going to click on the bottom pad of R1 here. And let's take a look at how the tracks look. We can see the hatched section. That is the section that will actually be placed when we left click. You also have the hollow section leading out front. This is referred to as the look ahead segment and it allows you to work out where the last proposed segment should end. The segment is not placed when you click. The look ahead mode can be toggled on and off using the one key while you're routing. And if we have it turned off, as mentioned earlier, the hatched segments are the ones that will actually be placed when you click. But the look ahead segment is very useful for kind of feeling out where you can and can't go uh, when we're on the stop, uh, stop at first obstacle. You can see that this uh, segment kind of leads out and lets you know how far you can actually go, which can be useful for looking around where you need to get into, whether or not you can make it before you actually dedicate any tracks. Now, on top of being able to manually place these segments, you also have the ability to auto-complete a routing uh, all the way to the target pad by holding control and clicking. So while I'm in the routing mode here, I dedicated the segment here. Rather than actually routing the segment here, I'm gonna hold control and click on the connection line, and this will do a very quick auto-complete of that route. Now, to keep in mind with the autocomplete function, it takes the shortest path, which may not be the best path, as you need to always consider paths for other connections yet to be routed. On longer connections, the autocomplete path may not always be available, as the routing path is mapped section by section, and complete mapping between source and target pads may not be possible. You can also autocomplete directly on a pad or connection line. So you can partially complete the route and then just finish it up with a control click rather than moving all the way to the target pad. Or for those more simple connections, we can simply uh, control click on the pad or the connection line. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and continue to route all the connections on the board. There is no single solution to routing a board, so it's inevitable that you will want to change the routing. Uh, the PCB editor includes features and tools to help with this, and they are discussed uh, in the next section when we look at modifying and rerouting. Let's go ahead and get this board routed here real quick. And feel free to follow along or go ahead and use the image provided uh, to complete the routing. While routing, pressing the space bar will toggle the elbow, uh, the angle at which the elbow slides. Like right here, we can see that look ahead segment. Again, press that space bar to change the angle. Th that elbow juts out. And as you finish a route, remember right click will break out of that and allow you to start the next route. If you accidentally place a segment and want to back out of that, the backspace key will unwind the last segment. And you can continue pressing the backspace key to unwind back to where you originally started the route.
again, that look ahead segment is very handy for finding out whether or not you can get into a tight space. And we're going to go ahead and right click, go into the view menu and fit the board. Hit Shift S to toggle out of single layer mode, and we can now see that all of the board connections are routed. Once you have your routing completed, go ahead and do a file save all to get those changes saved. And in the next video, we'll look at modifying and cleaning up some of the routing that we just did.